The James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang. That shouldn't happen. So this multiverse concept gives us a reason why. When the Big Bang occurred billions of years ago, it birthed our universe. Scientists also share the opinion that there are many universes out there with intelligent civilizations, and this opinion is often expressed as the multiverse theory. While using the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have found evidence that might validate the multiverse theory. Did the JWST actually discover another universe that has remained hidden for years? And is it possible that James Hawking's hypothesis on the multiple theory might be true after all? Join us in this video as we explore how NASA's James Webb Space Telescope seeks to prove the multiverse theory. Here's some backstory to this mind-blowing theory. The multiverse theory is based on the hypothesis that we have many universes running simultaneously. The theory proposes that our universe is not the only one. Instead, we have other universes distinctly separated from the one we know and live in. That sounds weird, isn't it? Hold on, we still have a long ride to go. In the multiverse, the different universes are called parallel universes, alternate universes, or many worlds. Multiverse theory believes that there might be infinite universes, each with its own law of physics, galaxies, stars, and organized civilizations. Thus, our universe is one among a multitude of universes, hence the name multiverse. We can interpret this theory to mean that we could have copies of us existing in other universes. Now, this sounds like a scene out of a sci-fi movie, but it could be our reality. By copies, we mean doppelgangers, people who look, dress, eat, and act exactly like you. It means there could be a million copies of you out there, behaving the same way as you. But it doesn't stop at humans or animals. There could be copies of inanimate objects like computers, cars, mobile phones, buildings, and other things. If there is an infinite number of universes and a finite way to arrange particles in each universe, it means that the same patterns will be created. For example, if you are eating cereal while watching this video, there are countless doppelgangers doing the same thing. The multiverse concept has appeared in several domains of physics and philosophy. However, the most popular application is in inflation theory. The inflation theory is based on a hypothetical event when our universe was barely a second old. In that period, the cosmos experienced a rapid expansion, leading to several orders of magnitude larger than its former size. Cosmic inflation is a theory of the exponential expansion of space in the early universe. The inflation is believed to have lasted a few seconds after the Big Bang. After this inflationary period, the universe continued to expand, but at a much slower rate. The acceleration of this expansion due to dark energy began when the universe was over 7.7 .7 billion years old. This inflationary model was introduced by Alan Guth in 1979. Guth, an American physicist and cosmologist, used the model to explain why the universe is flat and homogeneous, the smooth distribution of matter and radiation on a large scale. Guth developed the concept that the universe underwent a rapidly accelerating expansion a few moments after the Big Bang. He coined the term inflation and was the first to discuss it with scientists worldwide. Our universe's inflation came to a halt over 14 billion years ago. However, inflation doesn't stop everywhere at the same time. It is possible that as inflation ends in some regions, it continues in others. Thus, we can say that inflation is ongoing in some other universes, but there's also the eternal inflation model, which is an extension of the Big Bang Theory. Here, some scientists believe that the inflationary phase of the universe's expansion lasts forever throughout most of the universe. Since the regions are rapidly expanding, most of the volume in the universe at any point in time is inflating. Thus, eternal inflation produces a hypothetically infinite multiverse where only an insignificant fractal volume ends in inflation. Back in 1983, Peter Steinhardt came up with the first example of eternal inflation. Steinhardt, one of the original researchers of the inflationary model, began work on the graceful exit problem that will explain the end of the inflationary epoch and how we came about the hot, isotropic, homogeneous universe we have today. 
Steinhardt had been motivated to work on this study because Alan Guth had found it difficult to answer this question. Steinhardt showed that this new inflation doesn't have to end everywhere. Instead, it might end in a finite patch or a hot bubble full of matter and radiation, and the inflation continues in most of the universe, producing hot bubble after hot bubble in its journey. After observing Steinhardt's work, Alexander Vilenkin developed the concept that the proper introduction of quantum effects is generic to all new inflation models. From Steinhardt's findings, we learned that inflation could be eternal, leading to a multiverse where space is broken up into bubbles or patches, whose properties differ from patch to patch, spanning all physical possibilities. Based on the ideas introduced by Steinhardt and Vilenkin, Andre Linda published an alternative inflation model in 1986, which provides a better description of what we now know as eternal inflation or chaotic inflation. In a twist of events, Steinhardt later became a strong and vocal opponent of the same multiverse theory. He stated that the multiverse represented a breakdown of the inflationary theory because, in a multiverse, any outcome is equally possible. So, inflation makes no predictions, thus it cannot be tested. Furthermore, he argued that inflation failed to address a critical condition for a scientific theory. However, Guth and Linda stuck to their guns and supported the inflation and multiverse theories. Guth believes that it is difficult to build models of inflation that won't end up in a multiverse. He admitted that it wasn't impossible that the inflation models might not lead to an infinite number of universes. However, there is a slim chance of this happening. We can't blame Guth for thinking this way, because most models of inflation do lead to a multiverse, and evidence for inflation has been pushing us in the direction of taking the idea of multiverse seriously. Linda shared a similar view, that it was possible to invent models of inflation that don't involve the multiverse. Nevertheless, this is difficult. So far, every experiment that has brought better credence to inflationary theory brings us much closer to hints that the multiverse is real. Now you understand why this theory has occupied scientists for years. The alternate universes are believed to have everything that exists, from space, time, matter, energy, and information, to the physical laws and constants that describe them. The idea of other universes existing didn't start with British theoretical physicist and author Stephen Hawking's. The concept has been around for centuries and dates back to ancient Greek philosophy. Some historians say that pre-Socratic Greek philosopher Anaximander first proposed the idea of infinite worlds in the 6th century. However, this has been a subject of debate because it is unclear whether he believed in multiple worlds and, if he did, whether those worlds were coexistent or successive. Nevertheless, the first set of Greek philosophers and scientists we can give credit for initiating the concept of multiple worlds are Leucippus and Democritus in the 5th century BCE. Others are Epicurus, who lived between 341 to 270 BCE, and Lucretius in the 1st century BCE. Sometime in the 3rd century BCE, a Greek philosopher, Chrysippus of Soli, suggested that the world eternally expired and regenerated, thus implying the existence of multiple universes across time. By the Middle Ages, the idea of multiple universes had become more defined. Although American philosopher and psychologist Willem James used the term multiverse in 1895, it was in a different context. The multiverse concept first appeared in a modern scientific context in a debate between Boltzmann and Zermelo in 1895. Modern proponents of the multiverse theory include Don Page, Brianna Green, Michio Kaku, Leonard Susskind, Yasunori Nomura, Sean Carroll, and Stephen Hawking. Hawking helped develop the theory that led to the idea of infinitely parallel universes, or what we now know as the eternal inflation theory. However, the English physicist and cosmologist revealed in an interview that he has never been a fan of the multiverse. In the interview, Hawking restated the fact that the usual theory of eternal inflation predicts that our universe is like an infinite fractal, with a mosaic of different pocket universes separated by an inflating ocean. He further said that the local laws of physics and chemistry could differ from one pocket universe to another, forming a multiverse together. However, the reason Hawking has never been a fan of the multiverse is that if the scale of different universes in the multiverse is large or infinite, we can't test the theory. Hawking's hypotheses are better explained in his last paper titled, A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation. 
He co-authored the paper with Thomas Hertog, a professor from KU Leuven, a Catholic research university in Belgium. The paper was sent 10 days before Hawking's death on March 14, 2018, and was published posthumously by the Journal of High Energy Physics on April 27, 2018. In the paper, Hawking's and Hertog argued against the traditional account of eternal inflation and proposed a simpler and finite universe. For their study, the two scientists relied on string theory, which is a branch of theoretical physics that attempts to reconcile gravity and general relativity with quantum physics, partially by describing the fundamental constituents of the universe as tiny vibrating strings. They used holography that states that the universe is a large and complex hologram. Physical reality in specific 3D spaces can be mathematically reduced to 2D projections on a surface. The model they used for their study gives room for more testable predictions and will be further examined through the possible detection of primordial gravitational waves. Hertog had initially announced the new theory at a conference at the University of Cambridge in July 2017, organized on Hawking's 75th birthday. If we are to follow Hawking's paper, then the account of eternal inflation as a theory of the Big Bang is wrong. Hertog believes that the problem we have had with the usual interpretation of eternal inflation is that it assumes an existing background universe that evolves according to Einstein's theory of general relativity and treats the quantum effects as small fluctuations around this. Nevertheless, he added that the dynamics of eternal inflation don't wipe out the separation between classical and quantum physics, and as a consequence, Einstein's theory breaks down in eternal inflation. Using the string theory concept of holography, they were able to project a time dimension for eternal inflation. Thus, they described eternal inflation without depending on Einstein's theory. In the new theory, eternal inflation is reduced to a timeless state defined on a spatial surface at the beginning of time. Hertog hypothesizes that if we trace the evolution of our universe backward, we would arrive at the threshold of eternal inflation, where our familiar notion of time ceases to have any meaning. From their new theory, Hawking and Hertog derived more reliable predictions about the global structure of the universe. They also predicted that the universe that arises from eternal inflation on the past boundary is finite and simpler than the infinite fractal structure predicted by the old theory of eternal inflation. This new theory is a step back from Hawking's earlier work, the no boundary theory. The theory postulates that if you go back in time to the beginning of the universe, the universe shrinks and closes off like a sphere. In this new theory, Hawking and Hertog say there is a boundary in the past. Speaking of going back in time, scientists have succeeded in looking back at events after the Big Bang using high-tech space equipment like the Hubble Space Telescope. The telescope, often called HST, was launched into low Earth orbit in 1990 and continues to operate. Although it was not the first telescope, it was NASA's largest at that time. Hubble, which is powered by the sun, functions as an observatory and has been used to capture extremely high-resolution images with substantially lower background light than ground-based telescopes. Using its 2.4-meter mirror and five main instruments, Hubble Telescope observes ultraviolet, visible, and near-infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. It operated in an orbit 547 kilometers away from the Earth. It is the length of a large school bus and weighs as much as two adult elephants. During its orbit, Hubble travels about five miles per hour. This is like moving from the east coast of the United States to the west within 10 minutes. HST is responsible for several breakthroughs in astrophysics, such as determining the universe's rate of expansion. Hubble has made over 1 billion observations, and thanks to the data obtained from the telescope, over 15,000 papers have been published in peer-reviewed journals. Many others have featured in conference proceedings. Hubble has provided scientists with detailed pictures of the birth and death of stars, galaxies that are billions of light years away, and comet pieces that have crashed into Jupiter's atmosphere. By being in space, Hubble escapes the Earth's atmosphere blocking the light coming from space. This means it has a better view of space than the ground-based space telescopes used by NASA, the European Space Agency, and other international space agencies. The space telescope is equipped with five guided sensors that lock onto stars. The sensors are part of the pointing control system that aims the Hubble in the right direction. The telescope is so sensitive that it can lock onto a target one mile away without being displaced by more than a wind of human hair. 
Once Hubble locks on the target, it uses its primary mirror to collect light. The mirror can collect about 40,000 times more light than the human eye. The light bounces off the primary mirror to the secondary mirror, and the secondary mirror focuses the light back through a hole in the primary mirror. From this position, the light shines on Hubble's scientific instruments. Each of these instruments interprets the light differently. Beyond helping scientists to uncover the existence of black holes in nearby galaxies, HST has helped us estimate the age of our universe, putting the figure at 13.7 billion years. However, the big question is how far Hubble can see into the past. The farthest object the Hubble has seen is the GNZ-11 galaxy, which dates back to 13.4 billion years ago. This is the limit of the telescope. Since the Big Bang occurred 13.7 billion years ago, there is a whole 300 million years we don't know about. It's crucial we discover what happened during this period as it could help us solve some unanswered mysteries about the universe and also the possibility of a multiverse. This is where the James Webb Telescope comes in. The James Webb Space Telescope is the largest space observatory ever built. Scientists regard it as Hubble's successor in space observatory. It was launched on December 25, 2021. NASA developed JWS in conjunction with the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. The $10 billion telescope has a massive sun shield that measures 22 meters by 12 meters, which is about the same size as a lawn tennis court. The purpose of the shield is to keep heat from affecting the operation of the infrared camera. Although it is about double the size of the Hubble telescope, it is almost half the weight of the latter telescope at 6,500 kilograms. JWS is equipped with gold-coated mirrors that have a total diameter of 6.5 meters, greater than Hubble's 2.4 meter diameter plate. What this means is that John Webb has a 15 times wider view than Hubble. Furthermore, although JWST is designed primarily for near-infrared astronomy, it can see orange and red visible light, including the mid-infrared region, depending on which of its instruments is used. Since it was launched into space, JWST has been 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth and operates at minus 223 degrees Celsius. In contrast, the Moon is 384,400 kilometers away while Hubble flies about 570 kilometers above the Earth. Due to the considerable distance between JWST and Earth, astronauts cannot service it if it develops a fault. Also, astronauts cannot visit JWST to refuel it like the Hubble. The JWST infrared instrument can focus on bright objects like very distant galaxies. The JWST's objectives include discovering and examining the first light in the universe and the celestial objects formed after the Big Bang. JWS enables scientific investigations across different fields of astronomy and cosmology, such as the formation of galaxies and the detailed characterization of potentially habitable exoplanets. JWST can detect objects up to 100 times fainter than Hubble and celestial objects much earlier in the universe's history. JWST can go back to time as far as 180 million years after the Big Bang. Let's dive back to Hawking's and Hertog's theory for a minute. If further research confirms their predictions on eternal inflation, it would significantly affect some of the widely held beliefs of the multiverse theory. Before his death, Hawking shared the outcome of his research with the world. After a series of experiments, he found out that we are not down to a single unique universe. Instead, his findings imply a significant reduction of the multiverse to a much smaller range of possible universes. Going forward, Hertog's plan is to study the implications of the new theory on smaller scales that are within reach of our space telescope. This sounds like a great idea, since the most powerful space telescope, JWST, has been unable to provide any data that confirms the existence of a multiverse. It makes more sense to await the outcome of Hertog's research. Hertog believes that the primordial gravitational waves, which can be likened to ripples in space-time generated at the exit from eternal inflation, provide the most promising alternative to test the model. The JWST has a life expectancy of 20 years. Thus, it is only a matter of time before the telescope sends back data that will be the turning point of Hertog's study. More so, it means that there is more than enough time for the telescope to confirm whether Guth's eternal inflation theory is true. Let's keep our fingers crossed till then. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager.
While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.